Remember to own your mindset from have to to choose to. It's all about the attitude. I have to go to the gym today. I have to eat healthy. I choose to go to the gym. I choose to eat healthy. Did you hear the difference? Yep. Hello my loves, I am here today for a book review. This is my very first book review that I am sharing with you guys. I have been following Ali Adap for a while now on YouTube. I find that a lot of his advice, productivity, very useful for me. I was really excited to see his book come out, especially it's a book that about feeling good productivity and it comes to me during perfect time when I'm super productive at this point of my life. For whoever been following my journey, I am in Mong Mo Protocol week two. For this book to come out at the same time, it's literally like gas into my engine. So shall we dive right in? Hi, my name is Delilah. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for watching. In this video, I will break down why do I think this book is definitely a much needed tools for those who are trying to level up their life. So in chapter one, he talk about the secret of discipline isn't productivity, it's joy. In this first chapter, he covers what truly boosts your productivity with his own experiences as a former doctor. He recognized that focusing on his well-being first and use his well-being to drive his focus and motivation second. So success doesn't lead to feel good. Feeling good leads to success. Why? Because when you feel good, you are a better planner, a much more creative thinker, and a better problem solver. It's important to make everything into play because life is already stressful. So if you make everything to play, it brings the fun to the part of your productivity. In the book, he mentioned there are eight types of play personality. So you would innovate yourself into the play type that match with your personality the most and make it fun. For example, a McDonald worker find his job really boring. One day he decided to make it fun by trying to see how many people he can talk into getting barbecue sauce. So as every order, he would say, hey, would you like to try our barbecue sauce? It's unique and special and it's good and the last person like it. Even when the person turned it down, they still say, are you sure you are missing out on a really good thing? He finally got the people to get it and then make it fun for both, for him and the customer. So that is an example that he had for us as making work into playtime at the same time. A light heart will lower the stake and it lead to relaxation. Even in the surgery room, he mentioned that doctor would actually play upbeat music to keep the mood lift up. So it's like you being sincere with your job, but you're not taking it way too serious where you would feel heavy and pressure all the time. And there's one key thing that he mentioned that I really love is what if we learn to value failure as much as we learn to value success. We can learn to enjoy the process instead of just looking forward for the outcome. Chapter 2, he talked about self-confidence. Did you know that those who believe in their ability, regardless of they can do it or not, are the one who actually can do it? First step is you have to believe that you can do it. Confident is a skill that can be learned. So he embraced to challenge yourself in the task and think about yourself as a person who is fully confident. And what if you were that person, how would you act? And then follow through with the act. Just like how Beyonce, before she get on the stage, she would call for her inner confident salsa fears. It's much more confident, outspoken, and a performer. Adele would call herself Salsa Carter. So just for that, I start to call myself a name Salsa Lana. So that means whenever I need to be confident, I would call on a spirit of me. Hey, Shashalana, come out and help me with revealing this book for Ali Adap. Confidence will continue to grow when we learn and we get better as a skill. And it's so good if you can keep a beginner mindset. No thing that you know it all, you got it all. As much as you are a fresh new learner, you can learn a lot more. One more thing that he mentioned that I agree with it completely. He who teaches learn just like when you are trying to explain to someone about something that you already know you have no choice but to dive deeper into your knowledge and actually learn more about it just like when i open this youtube channel 
it's not even about a subscriber growth but it's about my own growth during this journey whenever i am making a new video for you guys it's forced me to do research and understand more about myself as i speak it out it's called practicing what you preach so i do see myself growth as a new person every time i make a video that's how i gain my confidence the book covers so many chapters and the good thing but i am going to bring out what resonate with me the most another thing he mentioned is intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation so intrinsic motivation is what drive in you your curiosity you want to learn to improve to be better extrinsic would be more like if somebody offer you a payroll or uh, a prize just to do the work that you are doing at and it's a temporary uh, motivation it's not coming from the inside so you should focus on intrinsic motivation instead remember to own your mindset from have to to choose to it's all about the attitude i have to go to the gym today i have to eat healthy i choose to go to the gym i choose to eat healthy did you hear the difference yep you see someone doing something and you wish that you can do what they do remember if they can do it you can do it too yep it takes works, but you can do it. That leads us to chapter three. He mentioned about people. Do you have the mindset of teamwork or do you have a mindset of I can do anything by myself? For example, do you have competitor mindset or do you have comrade mindset? So competitor mindset would be you win, I lose. My win, my success. I rise by outwinning the others. And comrade mindset would be, you win, I win. Our success. We rise by lifting others. In this chapter, he points out the importance of giving and an act of kindness can change how we feel and it leads to feeling good, perform better at everything we do. The willingness of receiving help, asking for help, but not feeling guilty about it. Remember to be genuine and value others' opinion that make them automatically want to help you again. A shared joy is a double joy. A shared sorrow is a happy sorrow remember to comrade and be happy for someone from the bottom of your heart don't just brush it off or turn the spotlight back to you so number four is seek clarity remember instead of pushing yourself to be motivated or disciplined dig deeper to see why are you feeling motivated or disciplined there is something blocking you and we need to figure that out instead of trying to just push because you can only push so much because that's on the surface only why do you think you feel procrastinate and the fog of uncertainty figuring out if are you overestimating things you're making it scarier than what it is this is my case are you hyper vigilant so you become overly attentive you start thinking about all the scenario in the back of your mind unrecognition which you not able to calm down when there's really no danger or threat last but not least i have this one too it's avoidance so you keep putting it off to the side because you rather do something make you more comfortable which is stay another year at a job that you don't like so the trick is to ask yourself why and ask five times until you find out why why do you hate your job uh because my boss why do you think your boss is messing up because he's uh, being so mean to the worker during certain time or day why do you think he's being so mean so keep asking why and then after you're done with why then ask what and then next thing is to set nice goal not smart goal so what's the difference between nice goal and smart goal so for nice goal is something like i would exercise for 30 minutes daily and i would eat healthier versus smart goal i need to lose 20 pounds by the end of the next two months then ask yourself when if you don't ask yourself when most likely you're not gonna do it put everything in your calendar if it's not in your calendar most likely it's not gonna happen chapter five find courage so there's a new term i learned in this chapter it's called amygdala basically it's a threat detector in your mind that detect yourself when there's an emotion that coming up such as fears or survival instinct he state that it isn't the lack of talent or inspiration that stop you from reaching your goal is fear 
So first, you need to know your fear. What type of fear do you have? Is it the fear of judgment? Is it the fear of failure? Is it the fear of perfectionism? Or the fear of not being good enough? Getting to know your fear is the first step to get over them. Is your fear coming from you or is it coming from them? The fear coming from you is your own judging yourself and recognizing your problem versus the fear coming from them is from your outer environment. So you need to distinguish which fear, where is it coming from? And it's important to stop labeling yourself. The person who are being labeled as a troublesome, most likely to cause trouble again. So if you label yourself as I am a procrastinator all the time, then you telling your brain that's who you are. So you need to learn to stop labeling yourself. And then he point out how to reduce your fear is if there's something that come up, ask yourself, would this matter 10 minutes later? Would this matter 10 weeks later? Would this matter 10 years later? If it doesn't matter, it will be easier for you to drop your fear. Maybe 10 minutes later, yeah, you still feel it. 10 weeks later, a hit or miss. 10 years later, nah, it wouldn't matter. So that's how you move on, overcome your fear. There's one thing that he mentioned that I think is so important. Like stop spot lining yourself. <coughs> I do that quite a lot. Let's say if you fall and a bunch of people see you. This also happened to me during my childhood. I was walking and I, I fell and people were laughing in my mind until today. I still think about it. And it's crazy because they don't even remember who I am anymore. So usually you remember your fear, but it's not real. So stop spotlighting yourself, snap out of it. Honestly, I know what you're thinking. No, there are people who actually care. They would laugh at me if I fell on a project or whatever. It's their life. If they really pay that much attention to what you do and criticize you, that's what they need to heal on, not you. So get over it. That lead us to chapter six, how to get started. So what happened is it take a lot more energy to start it versus to keep going. Just imagine you riding your bicycle, right? And you have to go over a hump. Usually this is the hardest part, but when you get over a hump, you slide out much easier. So. It's just important that you have to push yourself to start. Track your process to give you the evidence that you have improved in your journey and that will help you uh, with more motivation to keep going. You can also find an accountable buddy who is on the way to improve their life just like you. They have to keep you on your toe but also not being too harsh on you is what he's saying. Forgive yourself if you accidentally didn't make it right today yesterday last week because you can find the win let's say if you were tired you didn't make it to the gym but instead you spend two hours of reading and trying to work on your next project so that's the win that you have or you did not listen to your podcast but then you call a friend and she was very wise and you she gives you the advice that you need so you are learning from her too so find a win in everything you do even when you accidentally fall back a little bit don't be too hard on yourself you can focus on small losses or you can focus on small wins the choice is yours that leads us to chapter seven in the chapter he talked about burnt out and that's not only during his uh, former doctor experiences but during the time when he's doing his channel which is a career that he truly loved he still find himself burnt out therefore he find research about it and it leads to three different things number one is over exhalation burnout which is you packing way too much information and things that you have to do in one day two is depletion burnout that means you haven't give yourself the right time break that you need during your day number three which is a lot of us were stuck in i'm pretty sure i was there too is misalignment burnout sound just like the name when you are doing something that is not aligned with your purpose that you find no joy or meaning into it eventually it would warn you out so the trick is to do less so you can learn more and learn to say no it's so important because if you say yes to everything, you're pretty much turning yourself apart. If it isn't a hell yeah, then it's not worth doing. In this chapter, he was mentioning the experience in the hospital. He didn't even want to take lunch break. He just want to continue working. And the main doctor stopped him and told him, you need to take a break. And he was shocked. He was like, why? Don't you support to praise me because I love to work so much? So the doctor said, you are no use to someone, to us, when you are exhausted and you can't focus. So that's what happened. We think that we can just work a lot and all the time and we underestimate the fact of having a break. But having a break is what continue to help you to relax and you can continue to do a better job. So ask yourself, are you treating a break like a special treat 
or are you treating a break like a necessity? That lead us to number eight, recharge. In this chapter, he mentioned how important it is for nature to recharge us and ask ourselves what should we be doing instead to help us gain energy. Instead of scrolling on social media, you go to the gym, you go for a walk. When you recharge yourself, you are recharging your creativity. Last but not least, he talked about being in alignment. This is a unique one. Try to imagine yourself on a dead bed. I know it sounds crazy. It's the best way to give you a clear view of what you truly want. What would really matter from your life right now? Next, think about your medium term. What would you like to celebrate 12 months from now? Don't think too far, don't think too short, 12 months. And what would lead to the action of this week? Ask yourself, what are the three things that you can do today to take you to the next action that you can celebrate within 12 months? And that is the end of the book. Let me tell you, I only finished this book last week, but I was using his technique in the book and I can feel how much it was changing me. With the Mong Mo protocol, I became so hard on myself. I decided that I have to go in hardcore and be active no matter what and be productive no matter what. But now I'm going to pay attention more on my well-being and how I feel. Like today, I did not feel good, so I skipped the gym, but you know what? I read and I write content and I record the video. So you just have to find your wins no matter what. I hope you enjoyed the book review session. I did some reads about the book and I hope that you find it useful. My advice is hurry up, go out there and get this book. I highly recommend it. If you like what I share, please hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. I will do more book review if I do see that this video is performing good and you guys like it because I do uh, make a rule that I'm going to try to read one book per week now. Leave in the comment section. I would love to see what you guys think about this video and would you purchase this book. I really appreciate all your comments. It would let me know if I'm on the right track to create content that you will love. Alright, see you next time. Bye-bye. Sending you guys so much love. I love you guys.